What is time? Everything that happens in the universe can be characterized as an oscillation process, both on the microcosm and macrocosm levels. The orbital revolution of electrons around a nucleus, the revolution of the moon around the Earth, and the Earth and the planets around the Sun, the galactic rotation. Similarly, everything in a human life is subject to a certain pulse, tempo, or pace of living, and can be described as an oscillation process. Time is a correlation of frequencies of the oscillation processes, one of which is taken for a reference pattern. Since too many things in a human life are subject to the solar pulse, the period of revolution of the Earth around the Sun, a year, and the rotation period of the Earth, a day, were taken for a reference time. If we consider a human life as an oscillation process, we could see the following. Before the age of 25, a human being studies and does not take an active part in a social life. The age between 25 and 50 years is the period of the highest productivity in social activities of a human being. After the age of 50, most of people start to immerse themselves into their own problems and try to stay away from an active social life. Therefore, the most significant period of a human life in terms of social activity is the period of about 25 years. Similar principle can be found given the average age of a woman when she becomes a mother for the first time, which is also about 25 years. Since during the conceiving process a genetic information exchange is taking place and a newborn baby already possesses a new genetic code, this means that the information exchange on the biological level takes place every 25 years. Let's name this process as the frequency of biological time. Throughout the global historical process, it actually has not changed and remains constant. A human being is the only biological species on Earth which processes everything that he gets from nature and creates something new. Thus, beside the existing biosphere, a human being has created a technosphere which he is continuously modifying and improving. The rate of the technosphere modification has been significantly gingered up by a legalized usurious interest, which is constantly stimulating the implementation of new technologies to pay off the debts. Is there any periodicity in the technosphere modification? Yes, there is such a periodicity, and it can be traced easily if we take as a basis one of the fields of the human activity, for example transport. A human being invented a drake cart and it has served without any significant modifications for thousands of years. A human being invented a carriage and it has driven for hundreds of years. A steam locomotive was invented and its design has been modified in decades from steam and diesel locomotives to electric locomotives and monorail. After the invention of automobile and airplane, the modification went on by single years. We can see that the frequency of technology modifications is constantly increasing, and if earlier it was measured by thousands of years, now it is measured simply by years. But technical information is just a part of the general information of the human culture. Basically, the whole culture is subject to the same law of variation if we understand the culture as all the information beyond genetics. So let's name this frequency of information updating beyond the genetic level as the frequency of social time. The correlation of the biological time and the social time frequencies and their interrelation in the global historical process was named the law of time. Let's see how these frequencies are correlated. If earlier during many hundreds and even thousands of years the biological time frequency had been higher than the social time frequency. In the second half of the 20th century, the situation changed fundamentally. Now the social time frequency is higher than the biological time frequency. In the first half of the 20th century, when the biological time and the social time frequencies concurred, an event which in engineering is called resonance took place in the life of mankind. The event of resonance. Any system, even the one being in quiescence, has its own oscillation frequency. If a disturbing force having the frequency close or equal to the oscillation frequency of the system is applied to it, this will generate resonance. In other words, a dramatic increase in the oscillation range. The events of resonance 
may cause irreversible destructions in various mechanical systems, for example, an incorrectly designed bridge. Thus the Egyptian bridge crashed down in St. Petersburg in 1905, while a cavalry squadron was moving along it, and the Tacoma Narrows Bridge collapsed in the USA in 1940. The mankind managed to pass through this period of time and survive because this period was insignificant in terms of its duration relative to the whole historical process, and the population of our planet has not reached the critical mass by that time, though the world had been shaken by a number of wars and revolutions. This period is named the Revelation or Apocalypse in the Bible. Currently, numerous changes in the information status of the society take place in the world during the life period of an individual human being and the life of a generation. The attitude of people to what is going on around them also changes. Therefore, the logic of social behavior of people has changed after the second half of the 20th century. In the period of time preceding the change of the logic of the social behavior, a human being came into the world, received some information, and that information has remained unshakable until the moment the human being left the world. The one who was initiated into some secret or sacred knowledge at the beginning of life could prosper until the end of his life due to monopoly of this knowledge. The one who did not get such initiation had to work hard, for example digging the ground, now the time of initiations is over. They have lost any sense as a result of the increasing social time frequency. The rate of the technological development can be illustrated by the information provided by Cisco chief futurist Dave Evans. Today we know 5% of what we will know in 50 years. In other words, in 50 years, 95% of what we will know will have been discovered in the past 50 years. The world's data will increase sixfold in each of the next two years, while corporate data will grow fiftyfold. Within two years, information on the Internet will double every 11 hours. By 2015, the mankind will create information content equivalent to 92.5 million libraries of Congress in one year. Under the social behavior logic that has changed, a human being either learns and masters new knowledge continuously, reviews and revises his stereotypes, or moves to the dump of history. To be adapted to a rapidly changing world, a human being must be able to learn and master new knowledge continuously during all his life, and for this he must be able to learn by himself. A method for conceiving and mastering new knowledge must be developed. The main principle of the mankind enslavement is based on the use of the monopoly of knowledge. A small group of parasites sitting on top of the social pyramid possesses comprehensive and complete knowledge belonging to the whole mankind, and the closer the base of the pyramid is, the less knowledge is provided to people. Basically, two symbolic pyramids may be considered. One is the pyramid of power, with its tip pointing up, and the other is the pyramid of knowledge, with the tip pointing down. The law of time ruins this system of pyramids. A contemporary slaveholder, a master of working men, has to provide his slaves with new knowledge continuously, to make them work better and produce a profit while the social time is speeding up. But if the slaves get more and more knowledge, they will not be slaves anymore. Within one's comprehension of the common order of things, each one works for oneself and within one's incomprehension, or the one who comprehends more. The comprehension of the law of time and the helplessness of the present-day slaveholders in relation to it are expressed by Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin in his great poem Ruslan and Lubmila with the following words. From sky the stars he'll pluck, I'll wager, or shift the moon that sails on high. But change the law of time and aging he cannot, hard as he may try.